Hi, this is Kate from Contemporary Geometric Beadwork. I'm here to show you the fourth and final stage of building this particular exploding podcast set. We're going to put on six rounds of plain peyote, and that will equal two separate casting spines. One of them will grow up to be a helical coil, and the other will be a tool that you can use to cast new work. I've now finished six rounds of my rickrack bangle, reinforced my edge by passing my needle and thread through this last round one more time, and now I'm starting the spine section, which is the easiest thing in the world, as long as you remember a few basic facts. I've started a fresh thread with the orange beads, just passed up through a very few number of beads, little stop bead here at the end, and this is the way you do it. Place a point bead, or a splitter bead, as we like to call them, on the end, so that that just changes the two bead increase to one. Pass through the decrease, as you normally would in the rickrack, and continue on this way around the whole piece until you come back over here, at which point we'll skip from this bead to this bead, leaving a thread out in the air that we'll cut later to separate the spine. I'd like to point out here actually one thing that I do love to do when I'm in the center of one of these first rounds is I like to put on an old school detonation point. You can read up on exploding rounds and things like that in the contemporary geometric beadwork basic sections which are free online in the pattern library on our website but this is the simplest thing in the world and you're just going to love it. I'm just going to take a square stitch through this bead See, I'm coming out of one side of the blue bead, ready for a patia stitch, and I just go into there with a square stitch, leave this little bead behind, pardon me here, leave this little bead behind, and then it'll just stay there, something I can cut off later to help me get my first round off. And then this leaves me, I'll show you from the back, in perfect position to take the same peyote stitch in, that I was in line to take anyway try to get a good view of this. You see the bead is just square stitched on here and a little on a little loop. It's almost like it's on a little hinge and we can come back later snip this off and it'll help us remove the first thread. But you see it has nothing to do with my placement of the next orange bead in line. And so I really love that and I like to I like to do a few of these in the first round of any new section. I'm now about to finish the first row of my spine sections, and here's what I wanted to show you. This is the easiest thing in the world to get back over to the other side of the spine. Remember, this whole first thread is going away. We're like tailors tacking this form down onto the rickrack, but when we take it off, this first thread comes with it. So rather than trying to turn around while there's nothing there, or put on a loop before we even have a reliable thread, what I've started doing is just passing from one point to the other and coming back to cut that thread off later. So I just skip right over, go ahead and leave that thread in the gap, and then I begin the next round right like that. And so I'm going to go around this whole form, putting in my second round of transparent pink, which is what I chose for my core of this podcast set. And then I am going to uh, finish up over here at this end. And at that time, I'll make a peyote turn and go the other direction. And at this point, since I'll be working with a thread that will stay in the piece, I'll have an opportunity to either leave a loop or decide on just a flat turn. But for right now, all I need to do is do one more round of peyote. I'm going in that direction, placing pink beads, and then when I get all the way around and it's time to turn around or place a loop, I'll be back with you and I'll show you how I do it. Before that though, I'll stop and show you how to handle the decrease. When you get down to the decrease portion, of your second round, just pass through the decrease beads just like you did the increase beads and leave your second round beads at the bottom of each stack. So we'll pass through the point at the top with regular peyote stitch and then when you reach the decrease on this round you'll essentially put in a splitter bead, right? another splitter, 
and leave that one bead down there. So you see how this is just turning into regular peyote. It'll follow the valleys and peaks, but it's absolutely just straight peyote. And some of the stitches go in like splitter beads. I've finished the second round of my spine, the clear pink beads, and now it's time for me to turn around. I'm holding the tail bead that's holding on the start of the spine firmly because if I don't, let me show you, you can see that happily this is very loosely on there, right? And so it's very nice because it'll be easy to get off the end. But if you want to do a peyote turn, remember to hold that tail so that you don't have trouble placing this first bead of the next round. So that's how to do a peyote turn. You just turn around and start sewing. And so I'm going to start the third round of this and I'll show you how to do a loop on the other end. Right? But for now I'm going to place the third round of regular old peyote stitch and I'll go around this entire form until I finish up over here and in that case I'll turn around with the loop. See you at the other end. I'm finishing the third round of my first of two spines now and I wanted to show you what it looks like to place just one bead in between the second round beads. This is just uh, a little visually confusing. You might think you want to go through the first round bead to do it, but you don't. I place my green bead just between the pink beads and it makes a little bit of a dimensional roll. And so because this is basically like making a turn or starting a decrease, these beads sit out a bit, so they're sort of elbowed and kneed out. So that's how that looks. You place each of these third round beads in front of, not in on top of, the first round beads, much in the way that the hexagon increase rolls forward. This just does it a little more steeply. Now I'm coming up on the last few bead placements and in this case I'm going to step down, I'm going to make a loop, remember, on this end so that you can see both techniques. This one was a flat peyote turn and right here, see I'm still short one little green bead, but I'll put that on after I finish the loop. So I'm going to gather, oh, around 12 size 15 beads on my needle and I like to use rounds for this. The podcast bead is getting a little bit crowded right now, and um, my, my camera cut out before I finished my loop last time, but I promise that I'll catch this next loop on video when I, do, when I do it for this section. But right now I'd like to show you how easy it is to just pirate any little hitching post in the set to start this last section off of. All I'm looking for a place for is for my stop bead to sleep, and so it doesn't matter that I'm stretching up all this way to enter this next round. No, not at all. This is, again, a removable thread. And so the fact that I'm starting this way, it doesn't matter at all to the podcast bead. This is just sketching out in the air, and this is just a hitching post to anchor my starting thread on. And now I'm going to start another three rounds right on top of the green beads, but in this case, I'm going to do them all with gold beads. And I'm going to travel around here doing just the actions I did to place these three rounds. Uh, nice long thread, never traveling back to reinforce into the previous section. We're always very careful about that when we build a podcast set. I'll just lay in this first round and never will this thread pass back into any of this work after I get these gold beads in. And now I've started with this end. When I reach this end, I'll do a flat peyote turn. And when I finish up over here, or whichever end I finish up on, I will make a loop for you to see how that goes. I'll see you in three rounds. I was just finishing this first turn on the gold round when it occurred to me to show you that another wonderful way to turn is to just pick up a stop bead. Remember this is a thread that we're going to cut. Pick up a stop bead and go back through that final bead that you placed. Okay? And then just continue sewing back in the other direction. So this is just another way 
to do a turn. There are quite a few, as you might imagine. On this first thread, anything works. But now, once we get in here, now we're on the second thread, and this is for real. So no more passing back into the form, and this is a perfect place to cut when it's time to take the spines apart. I'm down at the other end of my second round now, and I have a chance to show you yet another way to do a loop, which is to go down through the same bead that you came out of. And I put, uh, I think it was 14 tiny little size 15 rounds on my thread, and then just go back through. And you see I'm holding the start thread, keeping it snug, and I just put those loops on, and now I'll go back the same way. I'll have an opportunity to finish adding any beads that I feel should go on at the tip. Uh, I usually come back up in this circumstance when I do a loop like this and I add in a last bead right here. But I can easily do that when I finish the casting spine with a stitch in the ditch round. So I have a choice when I put this loop on of whether to add a second bead on or just go through the one bead at a time and then shore up the end of the spine later with a second bead add. So it doesn't really matter what you do and a flat peyote turn is fine. You don't need a loop at all. There are absolutely no ground rules here except do not for any circumstance pass back into the other spine while you're sewing this. Stay only to the three rounds that you're working in, and that way we'll, be, we'll have no trouble deconstructing it. I'd also like to point out that along the way I do what I always do, and I left a few deconstruction beads along the course of the gold edition just to make sure that if I have any trouble there's something I can snip off to make things move again. Um, I almost never use my deconstruction beads, but I'm always glad they're there. <laughs> I'll finish up this last gold round and then see the curl I'm getting here. Then my piece will be ready to deconstruct. I'm coming down to the end of my third round of the gold spine now. Pardon me. And I have just enough thread to finish appropriately, which is really nice. So make sure you can see here this is where on this gold round I had placed this little turnaround bead there that black size 8 and it's going to be cut off with the first round so I am just going to turn around in my spine by going back through this one bead that could use a partner just looking for a nice neat flat peyote band and so you see how that just sort of finished my little run of three right here. So there's the finish to my gold band, nice and neat. And again, no hard and fast rules. Anything that gets you a neat peyote finish is fine. And now I'm gonna go back and reinforce this gold band just a little bit, but I need to make quite sure that when I'm taking these stitches, I never again pass through the previous sections. And so I'm only passing through gold beads to do any reinforcing that I choose to do. And again, when I weave in my threads like this or when I reinforce, I tend to go in a kind of an X pattern, but never into the previous round. I know I've said that about 800 times, but it's the most important thing at this point. Remember to leave detonation points and never, ever pass into a previous round. As soon as I feel like my thread is secure, and I do, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Um, well, maybe I'll weave back another little bit, but uh, there's no point in over reinforcing the spine, and once these two rounds come off together, these six rounds come off together, again it will look something like this with three rounds of gold and then three rounds of assorted colors. We'll do the stitch in the ditch on the spines so that they look like this instead of taking them apart when they're flat and they look like this because this little strip it's not that you can't do stitch in the ditch on it it's just that it tends to get easily tangled and it's so much easier to perform the action of doing the two stitch in the ditch rounds if you're dealing with one supple strip so I'm finished with my piece here and I am ready to deconstruct, but we'll do that in another video, and I hope you join us for the exciting finale.